Last week I saw this great YouTube video from the One Skill PowerPoint Tutorials channel on how to create a parallax effect for multiple slides in PowerPoint. Now let's see if we can get the same result in Articulate Storyline. Hi, I'm Mark Sparmon from Upward Online Learning, where I teach you how you can create e-learning modules yourself with Articulate Storyline. And are you new here? Then don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell notification icon so you won't miss any of my upcoming videos. Are you ready? Then let's get started. I'll start with a new storyline file and the first thing that I'm gonna do is change the dimensions of my slide. So let's go to the design tab, click on story size and in story size click the drop down menu and I'll change it from 4x3 to 60x9 and I choose 720 pixels in width and 405 pixels in height. But you can choose whatever slide size you want. Uh, I'm finished here so I click on OK. Now let's go to slide view mode in Storyline by double clicking the slide in my story view. Let's start by adding a background photo to my slide. In Storyline 360 you can do this with the photos option from the 360 content library. Go to the insert tab and click photos in the content library section. And are you using Storyline 3 or Storyline 2? Then you can go to unsplash.com and search for photos over there that you can import in Articulate Storyline. I type city. I select one of the photos and I click on insert. And Storyline places this photo on my slide. The next step is to add some text. Therefore, I go to the insert tab and click text box and I draw a text box on my slide. Now let's type something. For instance, the city dead. And I make this text bold, change the font size and font color and I will center align it on my slide. The next step is to group the text box and the background photo. This can you do by selecting both objects, right click and select group or press Ctrl plus G on your keyboard. Storyline groups the two objects now and you can see this by the group icon on the timeline and the arrow before the row on the timeline. Now I duplicate this group and you can simply do this by pressing Ctrl plus D on your keyboard. Storyline duplicates the group and now I align this group under the first group. So it's under our slide canvas positioned vertical at 405 pixels height. And let's change the text on the second slide in Never Sleeps. And I'll also change the background photo. Double click the background photo, then the Format tab opens. Now click Replace Picture and choose Content Library 360 Photos. And I choose a photo of New York by Night. Now we can add some animations. Therefore select the second group and go to the Animations tab. Click the Add Motion Path button and choose Lines. Now click Motion Path Options, choose Up and we'll change the speed to slow. And now you can grab the red circle and drag the group up so it covers the first group on the slide. And now let's preview this slide to see the animation. You see there is a small visible edge of the first photo, so I'll have to adjust the position of the second group. Now let's preview this slide again. Now this animation is perfect. And now let's add an animation to our first group. Herefore, select our second group, go to the animation stop, click the animations painter button and now select the first group. And you see that we've duplicated the animation from the second group to our first group. Now grab the red circle for the first animation and drag this down to the top of the slide. Now let's preview the slide again. The animation starts when the timeline begins to play, but I want that the user clicks a button to proceed, so let's add a button. Therefore I go to the insert tab and I choose the icons button from the 360 content library. And in the search bar, I type chevron down. I select the double chevron and click on insert. And Storyline inserts it now on my slide. And I'll change the fill color to white and give the icon a white border. And I position it in the middle horizontally on my slide and vertically 350 pixels from the top of my slide. The next step is to 
change the two animation triggers. They are now executed when a timeline starts and I want to change that in when a user clicks on the icon. Therefore I double click the trigger and change the when part to user clicks and the object part to icon 1. And I repeat this for my second trigger. Now let's duplicate our first slide. So select slide 1 in the left pane and press Ctrl plus D on your keyboard. And Storyline now creates a second slide in this scene. And let's return to our first slide and add an extra trigger to our icon button. To do this, select a Chevron icon and click on the button Create a new trigger. In the trigger, by action, choose Jump to Slide and with Slide Next Slide, the when statement is animation completes for the object you choose group 2 and for the animation line motion path 1 on slide 2 i change the position for group 1 and 2 so that the group that slides in on slide 1 is now directly visible when slide 2 loads and i place the other group under the slide at 405 pixels from the top of the slide and now let's preview this scene again to see how the parallax course looks like. Pretty cool, right? Now let's add two paragraphs of text on the second slide. Herefore, I click the insert tab, go to text box, and I draw a text box on my screen. And in the text box I type is lorem 1 and press enter on my keyboard. And now Storyline adds automatically one paragraph of lorem ipsum text. I'll adjust the font size and give this text box a nice fade in animation. If I'm ready I can duplicate this by pressing Ctrl D on my keyboard and align the two text boxes as two columns on my slide. On the second slide we want to continue the parallax effect and therefore I will add the text boxes to the group to continue the parallax effect. Therefore I select the group with the background image and the header text. I right click and select group and group. Or I press Ctrl plus Shift plus, Shift plus G on my keyboard. You'll see that the motion path animation will disappear and the object is ungrouped now and there are two objects on my timeline. Uh, and this is something that we will fix later on. Now the background image and the header text are selected. Hold down the shift key on your keyboard to select the two text boxes and press Ctrl plus G to group all these items into one group. And now let's add a new motion pad animation. And therefore I use the animation painter in Storyline to copy and paste the animation from my first slide. So I go to my first slide and I select group 1. Now I click the animation step and click the animation painter. And Storyline now copies the motion path. Now let's go back to the second slide and click on group 2. This is the group that is visible when the slide is loaded. And Storyline now pastes the motion path that we copied from our first slide. And because we switched the groups on slide 2, the other motion path is, isn't right anymore. So let's remove this one. And now we copy the motion path from group 2 on slide 1 to this group. Now preview the complete scene to show how this parallax effect looks like with two different slides. Pretty neat, huh? I hope you enjoyed this tutorial about how to create a parallax slide effect in Articulate Storyline. If you want to build your Articulate Storyline skills, then make sure you get my free step-by-step -step guide on how to create engaging e-learning in Articulate Storyline in less time. And I will know for sure it will help you because it shows you my exact process that I'll use for every e-learning module that I build in Articulate Storyline. You can, you can find my free guide on upwardonlinelearning.com slash free guide. And if this video was useful to you, then hit the like button below. And don't forget to subscribe on my YouTube channel by clicking subscribe and clicking the bell notification icon so you won't miss any of my upcoming videos that I publish every Thursday on YouTube. 
Thanks for watching and have a great day.